right, this is it. This is what all you people have been waiting for. Episode 17, the final episode of the base game for Descent, Legends of the Dark. Before we get into it, I want to say thank you to all the YouTube members for your awesome, awesome donations. You guys help make this channel possible, and I can't thank you enough, so you are awesome. This is your first time with the channel, or if you are think that you're done with Descent, you're not, because there's expansions coming out. So hit that subscribe button. You know you want to do it. Just hit it. But without further ado, let's go. Obviously the first thing we're going to do is scrape off all the nasty mole lines. But there's not that many because these miniatures are awesome. Next, we're gonna use some black primer. I'm using some Vallejo black primer in my airbrush. If you don't have this specific color, you can use um, black spray paint. After that, we're gonna be using some white primer and we're gonna be doing the rocks and all of the miniature from down below. So something pretty simple. Now, full disclosure, we are gonna be using the airbrush for a couple of colors on this. You don't necessarily need it, but it just makes it look a little bit better because it's gonna go on there smoother rather than just painting it all. We're going to start on our base, and the first thing we're going to be doing is some Agaros dunes and all of our dirt area. While that's still wet, we're going to be using some Militarium Green to put in a little areas. Followed by a little eye and in yellow, just put in little areas as well, just kind of make a little color variation. All the rocks we're going to be doing in some basilicanum gray. After letting them dry, we're going to be doing a dry brush of Dawnstone. Followed by another dry brush of administratum gray just to brighten up those rocks just a little bit. To make our mossy effect, we're going to take a sponge and we are going to be dabbing that into our paint and then dabbing it all over the rocks. You don't want too much on there, just a little bit. Once you're done with the Strachan green, we're going to be using some Castellan green over that and just anywhere you please there's no rhyme or reason there's no right or wrong way to do it followed by some Averland sunset on there which is going to create that nice mossy effect for the schools we're going to do a base coat of morgast bone Followed by a highlight of Screaming Skull, just to brighten them up a little bit. For a little additive effect, I'm going to take some super glue and super glue on a little tuft of dead grass, just to make it a little bit more vibrant. And finally, we're going to paint that rim in black, or if you want to do gray, but I like black. Now 
For these next couple of steps, we're going to be using some Death Guard Green onto our wings, face, and the skin areas of our miniature. Now, I'm using an airbrush because this is going to go on smoother and we're going to create a nice transition. For the wings, we're going to be focusing on the middle areas. And obviously on our miniature, we're going to be doing the face, the hands, the feet. If you get some all over the place, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be painting over here in a little bit anyways. For the second layer of airbrush we're doing, we're going to do some Diamante Hide. And we're going to be doing this on the edges and going around the green that is on our wings. Again, there's no right or wrong, re right or wrong reason or way to do this. We're just going to be creating that tone variation between the green, the purple, and the blue that we're going to do here in a minute. But you want to keep about a third of the middle of that wing green. For the miniature itself, or the body of the miniature, we're going to be doing this on the skin areas, um, specifically on where the uh, armor is building into the skin. I kind of imagine this as being like a parshendi from The Way of Kings, if you guys know what I'm talking about. If you don't, then you're probably like, what is this guy talking about? Um, we're going to be hitting up all those areas to include the tail as well that is coming up. Again, if you get some on other places, it's not a big deal. Um, just try and be as careful as possible. For the fire, final, not fire, final layer of paint on our wings and some of our armor pieces, we're going to be using some Stegadon, Stegadon Scale Green. I cannot talk today. <clears throat> and we're going to be going around the edges on our wings on the inside and the outside. Again, we don't want to do it all the purple. We want that purple to stay in there. Um, and we're going to blend these in with a wash that we're going to create here in a little bit. So it might look a little rough right now, but we're going to make it look nice here in a little bit. For the armor pieces, we're going to be using the same color and we're going to create this two-tone variation. The armor is specifically on the pauldrons, the bottom side of the hands, which are gauntlets, knee pads, um, ankle guards, and the belt area. The next color is going to be Dark Reaper. Now you can use this in your airbrush if you would like, but if not, you can just paint it. And that's what I'm doing right here. I'm going to go over the top portions of the wings, a little bit on the bottoms, but mostly on the dark top portions. Now this is going to create that two-tone variant, and when we put the wash on, it'll have a little subtle highlight. We're also going to be using this onto our knee pads and armor area. To highlight a little bit of the bumps coming up before we put our wash on, we're going to be using some Warp Fing Gray, and we're going to really focus on the purple areas, maybe a couple in the green on the front and the back side of the wings to also include on the front of our miniature by the knees. Now this portion does take some time because you do have a bunch of little bumps, but I promise you it'll look good in the end, so just take the time to do it. And this is what it should roughly look like at this point. As I just mentioned, we're going to work on our body of our miniature and we're going to be doing a lot of those purple areas on the knees and a little bit of edge highlighting that's going to be on the tail as well.
We're going to take some of that Stegadon. Stegadon, I can't say it. Scale green, and we're going to put that onto the armor pieces of our miniature. Now, I know we already hit this with the airbrush, but we need to kind of spruce it up just a little bit, make it a little bit darker with this green. Spruce up our face just a tad bit. We're going to use some Death Guard green on the face, the hands, and the skin that is exposed by or on the arms. We also want to get this to be on the skin of the chest that is exposed. Now we're kind of creating a variant a green, bluish, purplish skin color that we're going to kind of try and blend together, as you'll see here in a little bit. Now I know what you're probably thinking at this point, this doesn't match the card art or box art from this miniature, and you're absolutely right it doesn't. And I want to go off the cusp for once on this for some reason or another. I didn't really care for the color scheme that they had in the, in the book. I thought it looked kind of mundane, so I wanted to change it up just a little bit, and that's kind of what we came up with. For all the hair, we're going to use some Ulthern Gray. Um, don't do what I did. Paint the top of his head on the miniature with that this color right now. Because I had forgotten and you're going to not see it painted until the very end of the video. For the horns, we're going to be using some Abaddon Black. And for the straps that are holding the gauntlets up, we're going to be using some Deck Tan. For all of our robes that are around our waist, we're going to be using some corn red on the front and the back. I used a larger surface brush to do this a little bit quicker. And finally, some iron warriors on our spear. Now the ribbon that you think is a ribbon that is not painted, we're going to do that the very last thing. So just leave that as is for now. We're going to create our own shade for those wings and armor pieces that's going to make it look pretty nice. We're going to be doing four parts of the contrast medium to two parts Magos purple and two parts of the Levadon blue.
we're simply going to brush this into the dark areas of our miniature. We do not want to get this into the green at all because that will stick out really bad. So you're just going to focus on the top and around the wings, the bottom of the wings, and on our armor as you're going to see here in a second. We're going to be using this all over the tail, the armor pieces, the carapace armor that is exposed onto our miniature. For our armor on our knee pads and the gauntlets and the shoulders, we're going to be using some pterodon turquoise. And for all of our green skin, we're going to be using some beetle tan green. For the straps, we're going to be using some Agrax Earthshade. For our white hair and the black horns, we're going to be using some Nolan Oil. And finally, for our red robes, we're going to be using some Kerberg Crimson. And while you're letting this all dry, why don't you head over to our Instagram at nerd.nights where you can check out everything that we're posting and keep up to date. And you can see us open up some Pokemon cards. We started doing that. We're going to start the highlights with some Death Guard green, just re going over the green areas. So we're going to focus on the face, which is the kind of beard thing, the nose, the eyebrows, and the cheekbones. We also want to focus onto our hands and our arms as well. We're then going to do a 50-50 mix of Nurgling green and death guard green and we're gonna go over the same exact areas But just a little bit less of a surface area this time And we're really gonna start bringing up those highlights in the face and that green skin We also want to do this on the legs as well. The right leg is exposed and we're gonna be using this Color on that to kind of give it a nice bright look mixed with that purple transitional skin We're then going to take some pure Nurgling green, as my voice has finally cleared up a little bit. And we are going to do that on the same spots, just a little bit less each time, just to give it that nice, vibrant green look. Finally, for our green skin, we're going to add just a little bit of white, maybe a brushful into it. And we are going to paint that in the same areas, focusing on the nose, the bridge of the nose, the eyebrows, 
and a little bit on that beard that is sticking out in the chest. For those small little teeth, we're going to be using some Ushabdi bone. Followed by some screaming skull, just a little bit right there. For the tiny little eye sockets or eyes themselves, we're just going to be doing some white to give it that nice, subtle look of dead eyes. For the black horns, we're going to be doing a first highlight of Eschen Gray, followed by a highlight on top of that of Dawnstone, as you'll see here in the next slide. We're going to reuse our Ulthorin Gray on our hair areas just to get that up. Obviously, we do not want to get this in the recesses, just the top area. Now it comes a daunting part in doing this. Edge highlighting all of the blue areas with Araman Blue. I'm using a small brush, a 1 in 10 brush, or 1 zero brush, that I am going on the edge of everything and painting. This is going to take some time, but I guarantee you, you will love it at the end because it does make it look like some nice, vibrant armor. We are also going to do this on our wings, specifically on the purple and blue areas of the raised bumps. We're also going to use this as an edge highlight onto the tips of our wings and the spikes that are coming down. And the wing should look something like this. We're going to do that exact same thing with Slanish Gray. Except we're going to do this on the purple portions of the wings and the skin. We're also going to use this as an edge highlighting on all of our tail that is coming out and moving around. We also want to use this on all of the bumps on the knee area and a little bit on the if you're looking at it, the right chest. Again, you're going to need to go back and paint those individual little bumps in the purple. You can skip some if you would like, um, but it looks really good when you do almost all of them. To highlight up our spear, we're gonna use some Necron compound on a dry brush. And for our straps, we're gonna use some Screaming Skull. I'm 
Now to highlight up our robe areas to make it look super pretty. We're going to take some corn red and we're going to go over every single raised area on this miniature's robes. So take your time. You might need to do two layers of this as I did two layers for each raised portion. And we do not want to go into the recesses at all as we're going to be building up that brightness with several colors. We're then going to take a 50-50 mix of corn red and mephiston red and we're going to go over the same exact areas we just went over the raised areas. Again, we're not getting in the recesses, we're just getting on those top portions, building up those highlights. The next set of highlights is going to be one part Evil Sun Scarlet, one part Corn Red, and one part Mephiston Red, and we're going to be going over the same exact areas again. Now using that three paint combo that you just use, add one brushful or one part wild red or red, and we're gonna use that again onto our raised areas of our robe. And this is gonna create that nice vibrant looking color. Um, it's gonna kind of be a opposite of what we've done so far. Not as bright, but it does look fantastic with the red robes. Now for the last part, we're going to take those flames and we are going to paint them all in white. Next, we're going to take two drops of medium and put them into a well, three different wells as we're using three different colors. The first color we're going to be using is Mephiston Red to mix into that medium. Second is going to be Fire Dragon Bright into the second well with the medium. And the third and final one is going to be Flash Gets Yellow into the third well with the medium. We're then going to start with our Flash Gets Yellow and put it all over the place. There's no rhyme or reason on how to do this. We're going to wet blend this here in a second. And that's the purpose we put the medium for in for was because it delays the drying time. After that, we're going to take some of the Fire Dragon Bright and we're going to smoosh that into other places, whatever you feel like. There, again, is no right or wrong answer on this. And finally, your final color is going to be the red, and we're going to put that sporadically in other places. It doesn't matter where.
Then you're going to take a clean brush that is damp and just mix those colors in. You're going to create that nice wet blending that we're looking for and just blend them in um, together. With that same damp brush, use a little bit of stippling to put into the middle portions of that spear to kind of give it that nice orangish back look color. And that is it. We're, we're done. That, that was a lot. I know, that was probably one of the longest videos I've done in a while. But you did it, and it was absolutely fantastic. I'm sure you're happy with your outcome, because this is a big miniature, and it did take a lot of time. I just want to say thank you to everybody who supports the channel, who watches, who leaves comments, who gives me a thumbs up, who subscribes to the Instagram, the whole gambit. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey. Um, if you're not a subscriber and if you would like to subscribe, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.